Well, when I first started here, we was making about 70 barrels a day. A uh, small place, had four storage buildings that held 20,000 barrels each. Now we have 26 storage buildings that holds 20,000 barrels. We went from making 60 to 70 barrels a day to 570 barrels a day. We have a little over a half a million barrels in storage right now. And we're strictly a one brand operation. Everything comes out of here is wild turkey bourbon. You know, bourbon is only true American spirit. Bred, born, and raised from Bourbon County, Kentucky, which is over at Paris, Kentucky now. That's where it got its start uh, and everything. And, uh, and it's, everything is under federal government supervision. We can only use the barrel one time. We can never use the No color, no flavor, or nothing can be added to bourbon. If you add flavor or color, just like our, our, our American honey or our spice, we come out with a spice bourbon last year. When we add something to it, then it can't be called bourbon anymore. It's whiskey. That's what we strive for here to keep that tradition, the history of true bourbon, true bourbon. Well, Wild Turkey was started by the McCarthy family, Austin Nichols Company, which was started in business in 1855, back in that day and time. <clears throat> Most all your corporate offices was in New York City at that time. And all the businessmen in New York City went on a turkey hunt every year down in the Carolinas. And uh, they happened to pull it straight out of the barrel. His time to bring the bourbon, they bring the food, the bourbon, the wine, is all in the business. And he just happened to pull it out of the barrels. It happened to be 101 proof. They liked it so well, uh, at sitting around at night, they kept saying, well, this tastes different. The big difference is 101 proof, still 100 proof. And uh, he said, well, they like it so well. So make a long story short, the next year they said, you bring some more of that same bourbon. Well, he didn't know, uh, but we come under federal government supervision. So we have to keep records of everything. And he called them and asked them what, and they pulled some of the same bourbon. And sitting around that night after hunting all day, they liked it so well. He said, well, if they like it, I'm going back. I'm going to start boiling uh, 101 proof and call it wild turkey after the wild turkey hunt. Well, our federal government tells you how the most heavily restricted product in the world. It has to be made from at least 51% corn, has to be distilled under 160 proof, and must be put in a new charred oak barrel at 125 proof or less. So every bourbon distillery has their own formula. And I like to use simple terms. It's like us cooking at home. You and I can cook the same dish at home and call it the same thing, but they won't taste the same. The percentage of corn, rye, and barley malt, the cooking temperatures, the distillation temperatures, and all that plays a very important factor. The type of grain, the corn, rye, and barley malt, or some use corn, wheat, and barley malt. But all of that, the percentage of each one of them, we use less corn and more rye and barley malt. We haven't changed the formula here. The same formula the day I come here in 1954. We make our own yeast. We have our own yeast culture. We make our own yeast every day. And all I can tell you about the yeast, I know it's 59 years old. It was here when I got here and we were still using the same yeast. You gotta have good water, which all this area is limestone water. You gotta have good water, good grains, and then you formula how you want your product to taste. With wild turkey, I say, we're still making it old-fashioned way. We distill it low proof, put it in a barrel at low proof. The higher you distill anything, the less flavor you're gonna have. And it's like cooking at home. You cook something, you keep cooking, you cook it, you cook all the flavor out. Same way in making bourbon. The longer, the higher you distill it and everything, the less flavor you're gonna have in it. Well, that's the hardest part about it, is, you know, trying to figure what people's gonna like eight, seven, eight to 10 years from now. What's your taste buds going to be? This is the, one of the hardest things. But we have quarterly meetings, how our sales and marketing is going. We can adjust up or down during the process of making. Uh, you know, if you make too much, we have to pay taxes on each barrel that sits here in ages each year to the state. So if you make too much and you've got your money tied up, if you don't make enough, well, you haven't lost any money, but you have lost money in one way, because if you had more, you could sell it. <laughs> So it's, it's a proposition that you have to be in touch with all the time trying to figure out how much to make each year. You know, we tease and cut up in Kentucky. We've got uh, about a little over four million people in the state of Kentucky. We've got over four and a half million bourbon barrels stored in Kentucky. So we got more bourbon barrels <laughs> in Kentucky than we have people. Well, you know, the bourbon business has been great for the state, Commonwealth of Kentucky. It's, I say it's born, bred, and raised here. Uh, but you know, most of Kentucky is still in prohibition. 
a lot of three-fourths of Kentucky is still dry. Uh, we're that way. We make, they say we make 95% of the bourbon for the world, but we probably make more than that. The best thing, enjoying the company, the people, your friends, family. We're, I consider we're all family here, you know. And, and then being in the bourbon business with all other bourbon distilleries, we're all close friends. We're together all the time and enjoy being with each other. Uh, you know, we're in competition in one way, but in another way, we're friends. Uh, we'll do anything we can to help any other bourbon distillery out when they're in trouble. Uh, if anything's going wrong, uh, if they need help, we'll help them. If we need help, they'll help us. Uh, that's the thing I enjoy so much about it. Yes, uh, this is my 60th, September the 10th, I'll be here 60 years. And fortunate to have my son been here with me. Eddie's been here 33 years with me. I got to work with my dad a little while here. My wife actually worked here before I did, and uh, she stayed home, took care of the children, and then uh, she went back to high school and administration end of it and retired from that. So she's enjoyed it. My family's all enjoyed the burger business. It's been great to us. It's something I love. It's not a job to me. It's something I enjoy doing. I only live six miles away. I live within a mile of where I was born and raised. And uh, I'm one of those that, uh, when it becomes a job, I'll retire. It's something I enjoy. I've heard people say, I hate to get up and go to work. I can count on one hand the days. If I miss a day, they think something's wrong around here. <laughs> but I enjoy it. You know, you get such wonderful people working here, generation after generation. And, uh, you get to see them every day, and we're all close friends. It's no me and them, or uh, we're all the same. It makes no difference here. We're all the same. It's all of our office doors are always open to everybody. It's no closed doors or anything. It's family affair.